Drake Bell is a perfect example of society only cares about male victims. Seriously, let's talk about this dude. I feel so bad for Drake the child, but not Drake the adult. I do not feel bad for Drake the adult. And I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna give you a lot of reasons why. And remember in the two things can be true at once thing, someone can be a victim of heinous crimes and then also be a predator. I mean, if I've learned anything as a white woman, that's it. I can be a victim and a danger to someone else. One does not cross out the other. So Drake Bell, um, horrific story. Okay, I'm, I'm glad we watched uh, Quiet On Set. I'm glad we are talking more about how much violence and schmegzal uh, violence uh, is inflicted on children as someone who worked in the film industry for a long time, not as a child, I worked in the crew and I understand the power dynamics in, on the film, in the film industry. And what a terrifying place it is for women. I can only imagine how terrifying it is for children and especially a girls or any any child the more marginalized you are the the more you are vulnerable but for some reason that 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 documentary focused so much on this drake guy and what happened to him terrible awful but the first thing i thought when he was talking about he got into alcohol and drugs and all that stuff while dealing with the trauma of this thing the first thing i thought is what women did he harm what women did he harm? Because we know that's what men do. That's what men do. Have you watched any of those true crime shows? Um, every, whenever I watch any of them, when they, they're talking to these men in jail and the men who'd done the most horrifying things, guess what? Almost all of them had been molested as children. Right? And then they went on to torture so many people, usually women and children. Now, somebody who harms, who, you know, is a, you know, or, you know, beats women or children, whatever, that doesn't necessarily mean that that happened to them. There's a lot of reasons why people abuse. But we know that the cycle of violence is a thing. And a lot of times the people who do it is because it was done to them, right? But, but because men, especially white men, under patriarchy are granted so much power over so many people. And in that indoctrination is this entitlement to the bodies of women, this entitlement to the resources and the time and the love and the care of women. And you know, that whole like domination hierarchical mindset that comes with patriarchy indoctrination, men just assume that we're for the taking, they can do whatever they want. So why wouldn't, a child actor who came from a broken home who was, you know, terrorized by the industry itself, in particular, one man in, in particular. And then that person doesn't get the help that he needs. Uh, is, there, is anyone shocked? And then he has power and money and influence and he has all these teenage girls and children worshiping him. Is anyone surprised that he didn't just do the same thing? I'm not surprised. It would take a lot of um, work on oneself to not repeat that cycle, but that doesn't excuse it. And that the way this documentary is as grateful as I am that it had a lot of hard conversations, it missed the mark in one way. And that way is that it focused on this one dude who has terrorized girls, not even women, girls, probably women too, has had like almost no consequence. And he is, and now he is using this to continue to discredit his victims who are women. And now, because everyone's so focused on Drake, the victim, Drake, the victim. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. They are more mad at his mother than they are at him for anything he did. Like I'm mad that his mother like put him in that situation, but I've already made a video about how little people understand that industry and how easy it is for parents and to be like duped into handing over their children to predators. Uh, if you want it, I'll, I'll try to link that video if I remember. But the rage I have seen against his mother. And yet, no, none of that energy towards this guy who tortured women. I'm not excusing his mom before anyone's like, eh. Literally all the tweets, his mom, his mom, his, his poor dad, his mom, hey, she, she should die, she should die. Meanwhile, 
Drake has lots of victims who not only are were completely ignored in that documentary, but he also used that documentary to focus on how he was so self-destructive. Self-destructive. Uh, d- that you didn't just destroy yourself, brah. Unhealed men with endless money and power are so dangerous. And even unhealed men with no power are so dangerous. They already have patriarchy and all of its tools to terrorize women with no consequence. They got the law on their side. They got money on their side. They got their physical on their side. They got all the bros who will always care more about their story if the, if the, the, the documentary in itself is proof that nobody cares about what happens to girls and women. It's all about Drake, 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 Drake. I mean, some people got, but like, and this hap- when, when men are out there abusing women, they've got all that. And then they usually have women who are, who are enabling and apologizing for them too. Please, whatever energy that you have towards Drake's mom and towards the Mr. Pickles or whatever his name is, can you put a little bit of that energy towards Drake? Because right now, all that energy is going towards his victims. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So this journalist uh, right here, she's got a lot of tweets on. She wrote a great article, very good reporting. And she was the one, there's a, there's, there's a couple articles at least out there. She wrote one about how uh, his supporters, which remember this, this, I didn't even know who this kid was. I'm a Gen X, okay? Like, I didn't know who Dan Schneider was except for the fact that he was in head of the class as an actor. I had no idea he was this like powerful man in Hollywood still. I literally forgot about him until I saw this documentary. And I was like, oh, that guy looks familiar. Head of the class. So I did not know any of these people. I literally was introduced to them through this documentary. Except for Ariana Grande, but that's, or whatever. Grande? How do you say her now? I don't know. Whatever. She, whatever. She wrote this article for NBC News how there's like a whole group of people who are like yeah Drake ah." not only like I understand people sympathizing with them empathizing with them of course you do you want to when someone is a survivor of something so horrifying especially when they receive it as a child but he is on way one way or another encouraging them to then also go after his victim it's the latest Iteration of gendered pattern in abuse cases that attract wide public interest. Female victims and accusers are harassed, undermined, and abused online. We're already harassed and abused and undermined online already. So then you add something like this and it's just like, right? Male victims like Belle, who then perpetuate a cycle of abuse, are are excused and defended. This man was a part of a cycle of abuse. Again, not all uh, people who hurt, you know, prey on people were victims of it, but it's pretty common. There's also one for a, 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 new, a publication called Passion Fruit. I actually have never heard of this publication, but she also cites them saying that Bell uses the, used his platform and the, the success of Quiet on the Set to shift the narrative in his favor against his victim and his accuser. He's also been promoting conspiracy uh, YouTube videos that claim he was falsely accused. Like, Pushing the idea that, oh, it's Hollywood. Hollywood's paying these women to be... You see what I mean? He embedded a conspiracy video into his own music. DM'd strangers on social media. Even on his own account, deep in the comment section of viral TikTok, he's calling his ex, uh, ex uh, girlfriend's abuse allegations lie. We're going to go again, uh, into her allegations in a bit. Unfortunately, Quiet in the Sec doc gave Bella a platform to say... That most of the allegations against him are misinformation spread by the media. I remember seeing that line and I was like, hmm. In reality, the in- misinformation is being by- spread by Bell and his supporters. This is the article for Passion Fruit. It's called This if you want to look it up. So for years, right-leaning YouTubers and fan accounts are the only ones adamantly defending Bill, uh, Bell's innocence. But after Quiet on the Set, it's shifting the conversation. Searches for Drake Bell Innocent have been on the rise. All this other stuff, you can read this yourself. Meanwhile, the underage victim, because remember, these are underage, remains off of social media, unable to compete with the noise of Bell's millions of followers. Shocker! A man who uh, allegedly abused a woman and girls has access to money and power by having so many fans would use his power to try to silence the very women he hated and then plays into the victim, I'm a victim, I'm a victim. Wow, we've never seen this before. 
comment for part two. This part two of Drake Bell using his victim status to silence his victim. So this is the NBC News article that she was referencing. She was the author of it. So regardless of what you feel about Johnny Depp, please do not come in my comments saying a bunch of crap. The comparison was made because if there's one thing that that court case did, it was to make it very hard for women to accuse powerful men again. Because even though D Johnny Depp was found guilty <laughs> in England, he had the social media and his fans and all of this stuff to um, have a different experience in the United States. Please do not, if you are like a Johnny Depp stan and you come into my comments, I'm going to delete them. At, you're allowed to believe what you want. I don't care. I literally will never talk about that Johnny Depp case other than this mention right here of the way that whenever a very popular man is accused of something, it is not so uncommon for people to attack the accuser and go, liar. They went even so far as to claim all these fans, all that, you know, uh, sh the, the accusers were hired by that Mr. Pickles guy to, uh, discredit Bell. Like, it's ridiculous. It, it, like, peop a lot of people cannot comprehend that Bell could bo be both a victim and a predator. Although, I would honestly argue, in my experience as a survivor of so many, um, predators, I fully believe they were victims first as children. And they're just completing the cycle of abuse. But also, that does not, A, excuse it. Or B, um, literally, that's not always the reason. Some of them just did, it, it, you know what I mean? There's a lot of reasons that people do this. And like a lot of women, um, from my understanding, survivors of childhood um, SA, especially infamous, um, like I said, a lot of men end up being self-destructive or literally being abusers themselves. Uh, apparently, a lot of women in my position end up dead through outright or, or slow um, shmooshide. So when this is a part of your story and you don't get help, it is just like, it's a path. It's a path that you're pretty much set on unless you work really hard not to. The problem is, is because of patriarchy and all the tools of violence, whether it's physical violence or financial violence or all the other forms of it because of patriarchy and white supremacy culture and all of the isms, people with power tend to then use that power to get revenge on people they have power over. And so men who don't get help with this, usually, not always, or maybe I shouldn't say usually, oftentimes, end up completing that cycle and they end up abusing just like that that happened to them because patriarchy has literally set them up to do that and give them all the tools and all the entitlements and all the necessary trauma to be not be at peace with yourself and to hate yourself like none of this shocks me in fact when i was watching that documentary i had heard that he had also done some stuff and when i was watching that documentary and it's, he talked about how he started turning to alcohol and rums and i was like uh oh i wonder who I wonder what women he harmed, right? Men who have addictions are so dangerous. I'm not saying women aren't too, but men who have addictions because they're so physically strong and have, uh, have, been, have been indoctrinated into so much violence. Men with addiction, that's what I tell you, don't, do not get involved with a man who is an addict. This man will like oftentimes literally ruin your life, right? Unless he has some strong recovery is really working on himself, please do not let that man pull you into the pits of hell with you because patriarchy is literally going to send you that way to enable him, right? Like we enable men who aren't addicts. Like we enable men, that's what we're taught to do. So if he's an addict, you literally are going to die uh, through slowly through your nervous system or whatever. It's, it's, it's so dangerous, but I'm getting a little off topic here. Sorry, bear with me. What are you thinking? Sometimes he has such deep thought. He's just, you know reflecting. So his ex-partner who accused him in 2020 of physical and emotional abuse, which he denied, shocker, shared on her Instagram stories the last week that she had been uh, received harassment from his fans since the docuseries debut. So this, this, this paragraph is really important. The attacks on Bell's accusers fit into a larger pattern of social media being used to harass, demean, and discredit female victims of criminal violence and abuse. In Bell's case, Experts who study gender and psychology said that onlookers often struggle to recognize that a per perpetrator can also have been a victim, even though the perpetrators have often been victimized in the past. This is that thing, like, that duet, it's like, uh, yeah, they both can be true. They both, and so I feel so sorry for kid Drake, 
Is that his name? Yeah. But adult Drake, who's doing this? You do not get my sympathy. In our culture, we just want people to be good or evil. And this is that binary that we're talking about. This is white supremacy culture right here. And patriarchy and all of it. You're good or you're bad. You're evil or you're good. You're a victim or a predator. You can never be both, which is so crazy because it's usually oftentimes, you, you know, nobody is just like an angel. I mean, even Mother Teresa sucked. You, did you know that? Mother Teresa was a terrible person. But she also did a lot of charitable stuff and did nice things. You know what I mean? Like, like okay, you get, you get my point, right? She said in this book that in the search for good or bad person in a nuanced scenario, oftentimes more harm than good is done. This is why you we really having to understand that multiple things can be true at once. Not just two things, multiple things, but also opposite and opposing things. Are so, I am a walking contradiction, y'all. Once I realized that, I was like, oh wow, phew, I don't have to just be this or just be that. I'm a lot of things, as are all humans. And despite all of this stuff about Dan Schneider and how much he sucked, terrible, he terrorized those kids. Drake was like, well, he, he was the only one who cared about me. Great, thanks, brah. I'm glad he was good to you. Like... That made me not like him. I'm like, okay, I'm glad that he was helpful to you. But like the whole talk, it's like four freaking hours of how much this man <laughs> terrorized all those people. And again, I've worked on sets with terrifying directors and you know, the, the powerful people. It starts at the top. If they are toxic, they create a culture of fear. I mean, all in the documentary, it was like, it wasn't just the actors. I mean, Dan Snyder made terrorized every woman on that set girls and women and all and like terrorized so many people in so many different ways had unbelievably inappropriate jokes that were super sexist super racist super like like the, like seriously it was like somebody from like corn hub had written those shows and that, and that, that it wasn't just the cast it was the crew it was the writing team everyone was scared of that man and drake bell what did he have to say about it well he was nice to me he's the only one who cared Cool, bruh. I'm glad he was good to you. I bet Mr. Pickles was good to some kids. Like, d like, how can you miss that? Ugh. Maybe it was the editing. Maybe it was the editing. Maybe he did say some supportive stuff for all the other people who've been terrorized by Dan. But I just found that really annoying, y'all. So there's apparently like TikToks um, with 8.4 million views, viral videos of court footage of the anonymous female victim. And look at this, this poor girl. At the bottom of the videos, there was a, a the search bar, which included her first, her the victim's first, uh, uh, real first name, even though the court documents were sealed. So after NBC reached out, TikTok said it was uh, removed the search suggestion with the woman's real first name for violating community guidelines. Okay, cool, but like, you know, it's already out there. So again, to, to you know, come back to this point, it is hard sometimes to see the duality that hurt people can hurt people. However, both can be true. Someone can have experienced childhood criminal abuse and they can also engage in those very abusive behaviors themselves. So Bell pleaded guilty to felony attempted child endangerment and misdemeanor charges um, for of disseminating harmful material to a juvenile in 2021. Now, if you just read that, you're like, oh, okay, like, what does that even mean? We're gonna get into that later because uh, it was way worse than I thought it would be. So he got, uh, he was sentenced to two years of probation. That's it, I guess. The victim then, fi a 15 year old girl shared her impact statement, which I'm gonna share at the very end. It's really long, but it's like, I, I probably won't go into the whole thing. I highly suggest you Google it. The victim impact statement. It is, he, she eviscerates this man. He sounds, like a terrifying nightmare. And I don't know, I'm usually more likely gonna believe a 15 year old girl who has uh, nothing to gain from this than a, um, a man like Drake who has lots of power and money and didn't even, didn't even hold himself accountable in this documentary. If he had literally just said, I did terrible things to people or something, but no, it was like, self I was self-sabotaging. I was harming myself. No, you harmed a lot of people. According to the, uh, to the impact statement, Bell had groomed from assaulted and sent explicit messages to her when she was a minor. But shocker, he denies these claims. Comment for part three. So 
a lot of these videos that are out there right now about Drake Bell are saying stuff like this, that it was proven in court that, uh, that, that she lied about her age and blah, blah, blah. None of that's true. Someone brought up his ex-girlfriend in one of those videos and, um, and Bell responded to one person against, with these allegations saying, never went to court for this. This was a complete lie. This never went anywhere. Cool. Okay. If he says it's not true, it must not be true. Before we look at those allegations, I want to make one more point about this article. People often have a strong negative reactions to stories of child mm -hmm, abuse stemming from tremendous empathy and sympathy for survivors, as they should. As a result, people struggle to accept an abused person, especially someone who is abused as a child, as also being capable of perpetrating that abuse. I would, I would go further and say, as if it's a man especially. We already have a perfect victim narrative for all, you know, like, and so it's even gonna be more uh, ridiculous when it comes to men. She also noted um, that most survivors of child SA do not go on to abuse others. Notice that um, this includes, this is across gender, right? So even men who experience this doesn't necessarily mean they're going to go and do this too. However, when we look at those who perpetrate mm -hmm, violence, they disproportionately have histories of mm -hmm, abuse. While we do not know exactly what causes someone to mm -hmm, abuse others, it is, it is generally believed that there is not a single cause, but rather multiple causes. I promise you, there's a lot of men out there graping women who uh, never experienced that themselves. Literally, grape culture and patriarchy alone, alone, that deep indoctrination into, into grape culture and, and pa patriarchy entitlement, it's just, it's literally like, that's why like, I don't like, I don't even know if I know a single woman who hasn't been graped. Maybe not violently in terms of physical violence, but coerced, guilted, lied to, um, uh, all the things that men do. That's great too, baby. So yeah, there's a lot of things, but uh, what women who do, are not indoctrinated in, in terms of patriarchy is thinking that we are entitled to men. We are also taught that men are entitled to us and that we, our bodies aren't even ours, especially if you are a survivor of childhood SA, especially from a family member. So already out of the gate, because of the way patriarchy socializes um, men and women, it doesn't surprise me. You're probably not going to find women doing this as much as men because there's so many factors. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So what did he do? What was he accused of? What did his ex accuse him of? Noted, this was back from the Daily Beast back in 2021, before this documentary ever came out. So in addition to being um, arrested for sending <laughs> messages to a 15 year old, uh, his, his ex-girlfriend was not surprised at all by this. And she was an underage teen when it happened to her. She was 16 and he was 20. And apparently when she came out with her story, she received a flood of messages from other former girlfriends of Bell's who recounted similar uh, allegations. She also received messages from fans who said that they had had <laughs> relationships with the adult actor when they were underage too. I'm sorry, but like, maybe it's a conspiracy theory in Hollywood. Um, but given... I don't know. I'm always going to assume if there's a lot of women coming forward about something, come on. <laughs> what? I think he's hungry. He's like, finish this up, wrap it up. Come on. So even back then, this is before the documentary and everyone's like, oh, Drake Bell. She was getting lambasted by fans, demanding that she prove her abuse. And why are you speaking out now? Bell issued a statement claiming that he never abused her and intended to cast doubt on her motive for coming forward. Shocker. But once he was charged with this, from someone else. Then she was like, okay, what he's being arrested for right now is a prime example of what I witness, I would witness. Him having inappropriate conversations online with underage girls and exchange, him exchanging, she'd seen him exchange emails with extremely young girls. Like how young? She said, I saw really questionable, crazy mm, on his computer. The stuff he was looking at was forking insane. I don't pray that people will come forward, she adds. I know that they will. Now, he was formally charged with disseminating matters of him from la 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 la, like all like fancy court doc talk. And that victim was 15. Okay, I had never heard this before. Bell, who moved to Mexico, changed his name to Drake Campana and has been releasing music in Spanish, appeared in court on Thursday and pleaded. Now, I do not remember, but I also didn't know who this guy was. Did y'all know this? 
She said that even seeing him arrested didn't actually give her any, any vindication or happiness. So I would have loved to not have any association with him. It makes me nervous. It gives me a lot of anxiety. She described her relationship with him as highly tumultuous and really awful. He was extremely physical. Multiple times the cops would be called. Uh, I would run away. I would leave the house because he had trained me to protect him. So if the cops were called, I would just get out of there. That's a pretty smart tactic, actually. She says that her claims were swept under the rug and that they didn't cover all these other girls who dated him for years saying the exact same thing as her. And she also called out people like, give me proof, give me proof, while they actually never asked Belle to give proof that she was trying to get money out of him or anything. If she was trying to get money out of him, all he had to do was show an email, a text, anything. To prove, like, ugh. When I started dating Drake, I was 16. I was homeschooled, I moved in with him. Oh, hmm, seems familiar with his story. Do you see what I mean? Cycles, right? I was singing, it wasn't until about a year when I when the verbal abuse started. When I say verbal, verbal abuse, I mean imagine the worst time of, type of verbal abuse, abuse you could uh, ever imagine. It then turned physical, hitting, throwing everything. At, at the pinnacle of it, he dragged me down the stairs of our house in Los Fe 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 Feliz. Oh my God, Los Feliz. Oh my God, I used to live in LA and I'm like, oh my God, I can't remember how to pronounce that. My face hit every step on the way down. I have photos of this. She even shared um, messages she'd gotten from other people. I went through the same horrific verbal abuse, physical and mental abuse. There's so many days when I thought Melissa went through this and she got out. Another anonymous person and alleged that he did uh, committed statutory in 2017 when he took her 15 year old friend's uh, Another one claimed like, look at all this. Look at all this. I can't even read all this. She recalls one incident where he became so enraged with her for taking too long in the store that he attempted to hold her down in a bathtub and burn her with scalding hot water. There's also been like this dude um, texted, uh, tweeted, Drake Bell is a monster. I won't go into specifics. It's not my story to tell, but my friend dated him. He was physically and emotionally abusive at a fear from fear for my life level. They broke up. Her and I started talking. He harassed me, threatened to unalive me. He's a creep. So this is that victim impact statement. I really, I don't even know if I can handle this right now. Pause if you want to read this. Actually, it's just too long. Please go look it up. You will definitely feel a different way about Drake when you read that. There's another journalist who was sending, um, who was posting screenshots she'd gotten. Like, all these people who, they, I guess, I don't even know this dude. But apparently he was like singing and touring and stuff and hanging out with like high schooler as part of his thing. But he was like totally not safe. There's, I don't know, just lots of accusations from multiple people all across the platform. Just saying. I am not an investigative journalist on this story, so I'm not gonna like do a deeper dive than this. But just seeing this kind of crap, you know? Yes, we feel sorry for him as a kid. Yes, we feel sorry for his dad and what his dad went through. But the fact that like, this is the narrative now, and everyone hates his mother and hates all of the women that he victimized. Does anybody see a problem with this? Because I do. Even this stuff. Oh, you know, the fact that he came to the defense of blah, blah, blah. Just like everyone's like, oh my God, it shows what a good guy he is. Okay. But he also did terrible things. This is one of my favorite tweets I saw. Can the Drake Bell Redemption Tour please end, by the way? Because it was really hard to listen to him talk about all of his demons. How difficult it was to work through. And so a, a lot of my self-destructive behavior never talks about harming other, other people. He literally framed it as self-destructive, self-destructive. And then how humiliating it was to go bankrupt, devastating, to lose his house. Okay, I'm not saying that's not devastating, but like literally just, just not mentioning this really important thing. Slow decline in my mental health and sobriety. Women are just collateral damage, y'all, on men's redemption and on their healing journey. This is such a perfect example of that. How many women get tortured so that this man can learn to go get help? Talks about his DUI, behaviors that were happening. Notice the passive voice because I was lost. Cool, bruh. I was lost too. I've been lost a lot dealing with childhood essay, stalking from men, great for men, domestic violence. I'm lost too. You know what I didn't do? terrorize uh, women and pull them down staircases and burn them with scalding water. They briefly mentioned this. He's like, I took responsibility for that. No, I did what they asked me to. But the media grabbed a hold of so much misinformation. Oh, really? What is this misinformation? And it absolutely destroyed me. Oh, it destroyed you. All these allegations from women destroyed you. And I started to spin out of control and then he went missing. 
blah, blah, blah. I finally got into rehab. Come on. Ah! I was at rock bottom. Wow, so many of us have been in rock bottom too. Like, oh, this is so frustrating, y'all. So when all this stuff is coming out, this misinformation, uh, the, the police said they were deeply concerned for his well-being. Who is concerned about these women? Like, nobody's concerned about any of these women on this show. I mean, Amanda Bynes, is much, I don't even know much about her, but holy crap. All of the, I like, we don't even know what happened to these girls. We don't even know. But this is the, this is the main character here. This man who also hurt women is the main victim in this entire Nickelodeon uh, expose. That very well could have been the end of my story. How many times have you heard a man use uh, his uh, possible unalive, unaliving himself to as as a way to control the narrative? I told you this. Men who are uh, who are abusive, they always use this to get out of it. Or or Harvey Weinstein, eh, 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 with his Walker, Bill Cosby, they always use like they they know that we will empathize with them, especially because they're men, right? And they know that they can shift the narrative by making us just really focus on what victims they were, which he was. No doubt about it. The dude actually went, the, the his predator went to jail. It was proven. He is a victim. But he's also victimized other people. And that's just like completely brushed over in this. That could have been the end of my story. Do y'all care about how many women unalive themselves from, from this kind of stuff? Like... I, if I have to hear one more thing about men's loneliness crisis and men unaliving themselves, it's like, cool, do you ever talk about men unaliving us? <laughs> like, so he went to treatment center, he got trauma therapy, grief therapy, great. Those are all good things. I really wish your therapy would have taught you how to hold yourself accountable though. And for the first time in a long time, surrounded by people who wanted just me, me to just get better. I'm happy for you, bro, but you're sending your army after your uh, victims. So I, you are not, you, you are literally like, I, I, my empathy stops for you at the place where if you admitted all this stuff and I don't know, paid the victim, stop denying all this stuff, then maybe I'd be like, yes, you know what? This is a, I would care about your redemption arc, but right now I don't, I just don't because you're leaving out and big parts of the story because the man that the man that he goes on to defend after like four hours of how awful dan was and literally he's making people girls and women massage him and other inappropriate things for almost two decades and this whole documentary is like amanda like or what's her face are putting her toes in their mouth like the the most horrifying pornographic stuff making little girls do and what what does uh, Drake have to say about it? About him, you know, making people touch him and terrorizing people on set? And like, literally, I mean, make it, the, like what? Like that writer, he made her, la oh God. I, Something everyone knew, no one could stop for 20 years. Uh, other, uh, the women who were girls then talking about this man and he sucks. You know, people saying that he's, Dan is the kind of man who, 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 who will humiliate you on the spot, fire you. In addition to him, like no telling what this man did that we have not, the, the victims do not owe us their story. We may never know what that man did, but what we do know is terrifying. But when, Br when Mr. Pickles was arrested, Dan called Drake and he was close with Dan. And so he admitted, yeah, that was me. And Dan said, you don't need to talk about it anymore. Do you need anything? Are you okay? So while Drake was able to continue on with his life on TV, despite all of his demons, having the time of his life while being on set, while, you know, self, self-destructing off set and all that self-destruction, self-loathing. Yeah, I, well, I, I well, yeah, that, w that's relatable to a lot of us. Trying to escape. Yep. Alcohol abuse, substance. Yep. Well, check, check, check. We've all done it. No, not all, but you know what I mean? Most survivors have done all this, but you know, the only person who was there for him was Dan. What a great guy. I'm glad he was there for you, Drake. <sighs> That doesn't mean he wasn't. I'm so frustrated, y'all. Can you tell? So I don't know. Some y'all probably know more than I do. How supportive has Drake been of these other survivors? Has he come to the defense of anyone else? Or is he just sharing his story so that he can be, you know, shift the narrative? And then the only thing he has to say about all this is that, well, Dan was ill for me. Like, do you understand? I am so annoyed with this man. Again, m so much empathy for what he endured. No one should have to go through that. But that doesn't give you a, a free, uh, you know, blank check to 
do whatever you self-destruct with women, with girls, hurting people on your, on your uh, hero's journey. Like, no, and that is what men are afforded. Men and white people, the people with power have this huge like redemption arc, but especially white men. And um, everyone else is just supposed to be, you know, a, a casualty in their lesson, their hard lessons of self-destruction. I'm so over it. Every movie is that. And even the documentaries are that. Let me know if you have anything else you want to add. I, this was a very personal, this hit me personally. Um, and also if you like this, please comment, like, share, um, all that stuff that helps me um, get out to, to my subs and um, help me with being able to do this work.